Well, hello there. Uh, we're breaking new ground today. Uh, this is the joint Steve Perriman and Alan Hudson podcast. Thank you for joining us. Um, the plan today is for Alan and Steve to look ahead to next week's Chelsea Spurs League Cup semi-final. Uh, but at the same time, we'd like to reminisce a bit and go back 50 years to an epic game that Steve and Alan were both involved with. Uh, the Chelsea Spurs League Cup semi-final of 1971 and 1972. Um, welcome, guys. Lovely to see you. Happy New Year. Hope you're both well. Thank you very but much. Tony, I'm great. If I, if I can just go back even further. But last time uh, Steve and I got together on here, we we spoke about the games. It, remember my first game against Steve and he'll remember well sharp. It was strange, Steve, because we never had reserve. We never had Chelsea Tottenham reserves in them days, did we? We never played each other in the reserves as kids. No, no, that's about right. For, um, some, re for some reason, we were we never. I remember playing in the reserves a few times. We'd be down in Gillingham or Cheltenham or somewhere out of the way, but so we never played in reserves. But there was always something for me. White Hart Lane was my favourite all-time ground. Playing at White was Hart Lane. It? Oh yeah, love yeah, I loved love it. it, and I used, and I must say, I used to excel there. I've had a couple of bad games, don't get me wrong, but um, it was my favourite ground. I used to, my dad used to took me there with a double team with, you know, uh, sixty two was it sixty? I was on his shoulders, and that, that was 60s, what yeah. brought it alive for me. Whenever I come up them steps, you know, and uh, absolutely, I don't care if they got one hundred and fifty thousand people in the new stadium. It still wouldn't hold a candle to White Hart Lane, for me. I agree with that. I agree with that. It, I always called it a working class palace. Yeah. So it won't glitzy. It won't shiny. It won't luxurious. If you if you trip, you know whether you're in the home team dressing room or the away team, as per you, you weren't thinking, oh look at that. Whoa, wow. But you were thinking, what has happened at this stadium? What has gone on before me? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the most important thing of all. And uh, I, I had the same feeling about it, Alan, not because, not as I was a Spurs supporter or anything, but uh, once I walked through those doors as a 15 year old, that was good enough for me. And let me tell you, every time we I drive on the North Circular past the Welsh Sharp, I think of, playing against Chelsea. I think about that. Yeah. And you're right, we didn't compete against each other for the reserves. You had your own career going your way. I think I only played six games for Spurs reserves before I got in the first team as a 17-year-old. Yeah. So whoever yeah. those six teams were, they weren't Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. So our, our, our bit was with the youth team. And then, of course, later on in, against first teams, against the Arsenal, against Stoke, against Chelsea and all of that, which uh, great times. No one will ever change those great times for me. The one, the, one, the one outstanding moment I can remember, I played in the reserves once in Wild Lane, but it was my second time around it was in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John Neal was the manager and I was I couldn't, I would never get again the first team. It didn't really, it didn't really bother me too much. But and I remember... Tottenham got a throw it near their corner flag and Mickey Hazard took it. And Mickey Hazard went like that. And as I ran over to close someone, not close them down, half-heartedly, he just looked at me. I don't know Mickey. And he said to me, now I know how you feel. That's all he said to me. And I went, yeah, we've well, yeah. we got to get on with it, mate. You know, it's as simple yeah. as that. But I was finished at that time. Mickey was still a good player. Still coming. Yeah, Mickey, Mickey was a great player. <laughs> Um, I, well, was he a great player? He had yeah. great technique, great ability. He probably didn't do it consistently enough to put him in the great class. But um, Mickey was that special a player that he used to, every game was a new game to him. He didn't carry anything over from the last game into this game, be it confidence, be it do you know what? That worked. I'll do some more of that. That didn't work. I'll have a bit less of that. <laughs> he just played. Yeah, it yeah. was like he had such a clear head. 
he just played football for the love of it. Mm -hmm. And that came out so in such terrific performances, but especially was when Glenn wasn't in the team and Ozzy wasn't in the team because he then had the freedom to know that he was the band leader. Yeah, yeah I was the captain, but I never saw myself as a leader of how we were going to play. I was the leader of, we're going to be up for this. Come on, we're going to be right. And uh, Mickey was one of those players in the Glenn category, in the Aussie category, in your category, Tony Curry. Uh, those people that could, could decide how this game was going to be played. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that is something special. I was I was an also run with regard to that, but yeah, I was good at what I did. But you 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 group of players were very special at what you did, and as long as there's respect from both, I think that's the because because you know it's the combination. I don't have to tell you it's the combination of those players put together, isn't it? Well, I played I, with I, you. I, I, I thought you once told us, or you told me, that you used to tell Glenn where to pass the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I played, with you, I, played, I played with you and Tony Curry in an under-23 game. I think it was at Newcastle against Scotland. And it was like a dream. If I ever got the ball, but you both wanted it. You both could have been surrounded by players, but you both wanted it. And I was the type of player that had to play what he saw. Exactly how I was with Ozzy and how I was with Glenn. My extra role then, for instance, with Glenn, because of our understanding of each other, and my understanding of Tottenham, the team, the crowd, their feelings, etc. Um, and his acceptance of me sort of suggesting to him, Tony Galvin's on, <laughs> it's Tony. And he would have a look, and he was good enough to have a look at what I suggested and do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But sometimes do it, and um, I think I think that's a player doing as much as he can to help his team, to help his teammates make the right decision. And you ain't got to get upset if they don't do what you sort of suggest they might do. You just into onto the next, onto the next situation, and um, so it's a balance, a balance of all those things. Uh, it's the. Uh, the Frank McGee of the Mirror once watched out a team play and said Tottenham's never going to be a team because they've got two midfield players. Instead of being bread and jam, they're bread and bread. And me and Pratty have laughed about that for the last 40 years. Bread <laughs> and bread. <laughs> and in a way, he wasn't so wrong because we both needed another type to play with us. Wow. And uh, yeah, great times though. Wonderful times. Yeah. Love, it. Love, love that era. Loved it. What 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 good competition it was. Uh, I always wonder about you and your ability, for instance. Um, remember, I was part of sort of bedding Aussie in to play at Tottenham in this new country, having left the sunshine of Argentina to go and play an away game at Swansea <laughs> on a Tuesday night with, with Tommy Smith threatening to knock his knock five bells of shit out of him before the game and after and during. <laughs> and um, yeah, those type of players to the excited supporters and in a way, what I did was, if I went into a 50-50, that excited supporters, because they used to respect that, that you'd put your foot in. But, you know, Glenn, Glenn was like the orchestra leader to that White Hart Lane crowd. They just lapped everything he did. And, um, but I always wonder about how, for instance, if you're playing for Leeds, for Stoke against Leeds United, Knowing what Leeds were at the time, and I always thought that Revy undersold their ability because I think they was good enough to out-football people. I really did. They didn't need to do the extra bits. No, I agree. I agree. I, I, I thought they, they were a fantastic side. They were really well. But how did they deal with you, Alan? How did they deal with you? Did they man-to-man -man mark you? Did they... 
no, they follow no. you around. They just they you know you get in the modern game you you hear about this possession and everything else. I, first first time I was at Ellen Road, I was uh, I was a sixteen year old and I, I had a bad injury and a doctor he let me do the, put me on dressing room duty and also he'd take me on on the road trips away and I sat on the bench. Docky got the sack. Ron Sir was in charge. And Leeds beat Chelsea 7 0. Ozzy had wow. just come back from his broken leg. And it could have been 27. They must have had all these stats about passes. They just outpassed Chelsea completely. Chelsea couldn't get the ball off them. They were that good. You know, but Chelsea were that bad. Yeah. But they yeah. did it. In, but they did it in a way where they. It's not like Manchester City, who can, you know, they struggle to score goals at times, as we see at Brentford. Um, you know, they had Alan Clark and Mick Jones up front. And they had Lorimer, who could hit them from anywhere. So they were, they were dangerous from all from all angles. Leeds, they were. They did great supplying the bullets. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you're spot on. And the two midfield players are the two players that I want to play against every Saturday, because they bring the best out of you. Separate. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if me and you played yeah. against, I used to play at Stoke with John Mahoney, and he was very much, yes. very much like, like you, but he didn't have, he didn't have quite have your ability to to get in, see things, and pass. And John was just, you know, he was a Welshman. He was a good old sure, artist. Sure. Terrific. And I just said to him, we were two 0 down against Leeds one day when they were going to break the record, twenty nine games, and uh, they were two 0 up after a quarter of an hour at Victoria Ground. And I just looked at Josh and I went, mate, you you got to stop Giles, mate. You're not you're not doing it, you know. Leave Brem there to me, and you take Giles. And yeah. and we got back to two all. We didn't want it. We come half time. We beat them three two. It a, they reckon it's Stoke is the best game they've ever seen. Fantastic. And the whole whole country must have had their transistor radios on listening to this because had they won, they'd have broken the record of thirty yeah. unbeaten games. And exactly. I know every time I go out there, see, they go, remember the Leeds game? The, they reckon they cleaned the betting shops out, even though we were 2 0 down. They cleaned the betting shops out. They, you know, because we had we were on a good run ourselves, and they come there. They yes. start. Joe Jordan scored a third goal to make it 3 0, and he was marginally offside. And we would have been in big trouble. They would have, we would have then gone on and broke the record, you know. But yeah, they, yeah. Were that, they were that good. They were that good. But that, at that time, Bremner and Giles were just over the edge. I was at okay. my, I was at my prime, and they were at there. But we, we, you and I would have loved playing against them too because it was great, great. It's like watching Ben Hur, you know, chariot yeah. race. It was well, you you would have loved it because they were they were questioning your ability. Do you want to keep getting that ball with us doing this to you and doing that to you? And Clarky getting you from the the other side of you. Um, whereas me, they they thought they were. I don't think I was that good a player for them to sort of go and nail. But they thought it was. Let's nail him, and that'll stop a lot of what Tottenham's got. Um, but it only lifted me. Why well, would? <laughs> I wanted to run a bit harder and jump a bit higher on the strength of that, what they were doing. So um, you're right. They do pull the best out of you. Absolutely. I, I, I truly believe in that. Well, that's that's what you call a great team, and they were a great team. And I agree with what they you were. said about the manager. The manager held them back with a dirty tricks thing. It was. Um... But anyway, Tony, carry on. Well, I was just. Getting... I know you're weird. We we could do this all day, me and Steve. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, going off the subject. Yeah, we we <laughs> we do want to get to the Chelsea Spurs rivalry, but I just. I'd just like to pick Steve up on a point he made about Aussie RD list and Tommy Smith. And I'm just going to ask you, Steve, that was an interesting story you you offered there. What was what was Aussie's reaction to Tommy Smith's intimidatory tactics <laughs> in his first season? Same. He loved it. Loved it. Didn't like the pain that, that a player could inflict on another player. Of course, he didn't like the pain. No one does. But it was a test of his ability. And he knew that the question marks against him was, how's he going to play on English pitches against the, the rough and tough of English football, Division One football? And therefore, this was another chance for him to prove what he had. And he had it, for sure. 
So um, it got smashed one day. I think it was by a big Yugoslav centre forward lump at uh, Goodison. He got absolutely smashed. Bosh! A little bit like I was saying about Alan Clark getting you from the other side. And uh, Ozzy got up and he, he didn't he didn't go potty at the ref at the at the player. He went potty at the ref. Ref, you effing yeah, 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 yeah. and really going for it. And and I run over as captain, or I'd, I'd run over anyway. Say, Ozzy, Ozzy, whoa, whoa, oh, Ozzy, whoa there. He turned to me, he sort of, down the side of my face, he went, I'm as cool as fucking ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, then. meaning, Steve, don't worry, I'm not going to get myself sent off. Anyway, eventually, the game gets restarted and we get a foul and we, we, we take the free kick and Ozzy runs past the, the referee and says, bloody foreigners. <laughs> 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 so, Love it. so I take so it he, that you he played, I, I take it that you taught him to swear as well. You taught him the English English language, yeah. Peter, he called him Peter Taylor. Peter Taylor did, yeah. Peter yeah. Taylor taught him how to swear. Oh right, okay. They, on their first on their first trip, they joined us, of course, late because they'd played in a World Cup. And we'd done the sort of bulk of the training at home and then went to Holland as a base to play pre-season games, but also train, as you do in pre-season. And uh, they joined us in Holland. And um, in Keith's wisdom, he put him in a, a room of three with Peter Taylor. And Peter Taylor would say to him stuff like, if, if someone says hello, hello, you say half a lager. <laughs> So this is hilarious coming from foreigners because they don't drink half a lager, do they? They don't have a red wine or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, taught them all the swear words. And, and I've got to say, in Japan, Ozzy taught my kids all the Japanese swear words. So it sort of came back on us. <laughs> so, yeah, great, great, great little fella. Great yeah. player. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK, well, I guess, I guess we better go back to... Uh... What I mentioned in the intro there, that the, 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 that epic semi-final between Tw Chelsea and Spurs uh, in the League Cup, 71-72. What guys? What, what are your memories of those two games? You didn't play in the first one, Steve, did you? No, I missed it. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind me telling this, I missed it because we played the UEFA Cup tie away in Bucharest, Rapid Bucharest, and it was called afterwards the battle of bucharest they smashed the living dialects out of us and uh, we won the game we won both legs of the game i think this was the second leg and i got carried off and you would assume by what i just said that that was because of a bad tackle or whatever it wasn't i went into a on a on a hard pitch an icy pitch i went into a slide tackle and fell awkward on the shoulder so i was now in a sling whatever and um so i wasn't part of the battle of bucharest in terms of being on the wrong end of it jimmy jimmy pierce came on as a sub and um they were whacking players all over the place that was their way of dealing with tottenham's ability and uh i'll never forget it i was sat on the touchline with with a sling on and jimmy jimmy pierce went like that to to this player that had just fouled him and then wiped his head and the referee sent him off for that. And it was such a bad, bad, uh, controlled, undisciplined game that they, um, the video, they destroyed. So it couldn't be seen. Oh, really? By the authorities. And um, anyway, so by the, I couldn't get fit in time enough for that game. So you're right. And Terry Naylor replaced me. And I think he man to man marked you, didn't he? If that's what he calls it. <laughs> no, I know yeah. Terry. Ter Terry used to be good friends with my friend Malcolm Molyneux, who passed away uh, three, four years ago. And I used to go and I'd see him at a couple of pubs over the East End doing this Frank Sinatra bit, you know. And 
It was yeah. always very That's nice, Terry. very nice for me, Terry, because uh, I played against. Uh, as I say, White Hart Lane was my place, and I, I played in the game where we won, Stoke won the first match at White, uh, their first match ever in a hundred years. And Terry had the ball on the edge of their box, twenty-five yards out, say, and he was giving it the Franz Beckenbauer a bit, you know, looking around and all that and all that. And I just nipped it off his toe and put us one nil up or two nil up. And he always, I always <laughs> mentioned to him that. Um, Absolutely. So that, it would have been an entirely different game at the bridge had you played instead of Terry, obviously, because um, he gave the penalty away. So I chased him in the box for, for one goal he, and he, he handled yeah. it. He panicked, you know. Yeah. He wasn't, he was all right. Yeah. In 10 and he scored. He scored in that game as well. Yeah, so he, he had a bit of an effect. He, he did. scored because we, we lost 3 2, didn't we? Yeah. And so, so you had a first leg advantage. Um, I've checked uh, the league tables, for instance. We, we finished six, you finished seventh that year, and we finished three points above you. Yeah. Um, so we were sort of even Stevens, we were levels, which actually this game over two legs suggested that we were levels as well, yeah. um, because it took a very special goal to win it. And I think you want to tell us, Alan, about that. Um, I wouldn't call it special. It's one of those um, <laughs> nice ones, Cyril, wasn't it? Yeah. Cyril, Cyril was on the far post, a big pack. I don't know. I, I can remember Mike England has always gave the free kick away, right right near the left-hand corner. And uh, yeah. it was this all over. Is, for the listeners, by the way, this is the second leg. This is the second leg, Spurs, yeah. Spurs had lost 3-2 at the bridge, which is not a terrible result. Bearing in mind you've got a home leg to come. Yeah. And then Chelsea come with Alan to White Hart Lane. We're 2-1 up. I think Martin Chivers took a throw in and I chested it down here and gave you a penalty to make it two all. So now it's okay. down to me. I'll give the penalty away. And then yeah. a few minutes later, we've gone up the other end. Mike England's jumped all over Osgood as Osgood's made a meal of it. Everybody I speak to seemed to think it was a corner, but it weren't. It was right near corner near the free kick. And I see all our big fellas coming up. We had we were good, you know, aerially with yeah, Johnny, absolutely. Uh, Johnny Dempsey, Webby, Oz, Hutch, you know, all these got but he didn't play that night out, but Chris Garland was good in the air. And I just thought the pitch was a mud, you know, mud bath, wasn't it? As ever. I just thought I'm just gonna smash it along the floor. Wow. And it just went through a, a, a sea of legs, you know, and nobody knew where it was going. And Cyril was on the goalpost and Went through his legs, I think. So you could say I nutmegged him from 35 yards. Yeah, I spoke to Pat about it. And uh, Pat said that uh, it was rolling towards a bit more than a roll, but it was going towards Cyril, who I think threw a right leg at it. Yeah. And Cyril Knowles had such a special left foot. Yeah, yeah. My yeah, God. Yeah. Wow. He could, he could drop it anywhere. He's crossing. I mean, they talk about left wing backs these days. Cell Knowles was a left back, but a left wing back and a left winger. And he, he provided the crosses for so many goals. But anyway, Pat saw it going up to, to uh, Cyril and started to look at the halfway line. Like, where's that going? And um, of course, it went under his foot. So, or for his legs or whatever. But, uh, and I didn't realise, Alan, that that was the winning goal. That's what put you to Wembley. We just about had time to kick off, Steve, yeah. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine the disappointment. But Pat, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that would have been uh, that would have been a fantastic two-leg final. Wouldn't it? I think, Wouldn't I think it? you know, because Wembley sometimes are so disappointing in the finals. We went on, we went on, lost to Stoke in the final, which was a great result for me because that gave them the money to buy me. But at the time, yeah. it wasn't a great result. But... I believe the two-legged finals are better than Wembley in the League Cup, not in the FA Cup because it's special. But no they doubt. were two. They were two magnificent games, and I remember uh, the following following morning, uh, well, about two o'clock that morning, Peter Osgood and my mate Danny Gillen were taken away in the police 
band uh, causing trouble outside of wrestling, which they didn't. They didn't. We're just beating you. We're beating you. We were silly singing. Oh, we're on our way to Wembley again. There's only four. Chrissy Garland was there. Anyway, they end up fighting police in the King's Road. And so they both got longed up. I went up to the court the next day. They got off with a slap wrist. Sexton never said anything about it. And we went down to Alexander's and Venables is sitting there having lunch and we sat down we had a few drinks and and terry said to me and terry played in a terrific chelsea team he said uh, that is the yes. best i've ever seen a chelsea team play ever yeah. we was we were superb that night and uh i don't and a good I, judge I think, yeah yeah he was a good judge probably the best england manager in my eyes the best england manager as well um through 1996 whatever absolutely but, uh, but it was um, no, it's a very that was why it was a special ground as well because we we had some great matches with you. It was great. It was great. To, Chelsea and Spurs were special games, weren't they? Yeah. Well, and I think this I think this one might be, but they haven't got the same passion. There's not enough Londoners in them. No. Well, yeah. that that's the thing you could say about those our games. Yeah. 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 I mean. Aussie. Feel there was a passion between the managers, not in a nasty way by any means. So, um, can you still hear me? Yep. You there, Tony? You asleep yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I'm listening right. to you guys. <laughs> the passion was the passion was unbelievable, and it's the passion that drove you on as a player. For for instance, two days, I, I, I it's, it's a carryover, isn't it? Because we're talking about a, a game that's going to happen in a few days' time. Um, you know, I saw Tottenham under the last two managers previous to this one, and it looked like that the players uh, didn't want to run from that particular manager. Well, if you which it looks like they are running for Conte as per the work rate and all the stats and you can talk about stats as long as you want but they've gone from being the, the least workable team to the best so I would say that Conte is, uh, is, is the dreams or what but go back to him you know, for manager A, but you don't fancy manager B or C, then I think you're selling your profession short and you're selling your supporters short and you're selling the club, the big banner above everything. It's Tottenham Hotspur or Chelsea in your case. And um, therefore, I think that, uh, you know, how long is that going to last running for Conte, for instance? But maybe he's going to be clever enough to work that out for now. But, but what a good test this will be. I think we play Chelsea three times, don't we, in the next however many days because we got them in the league as well. So yeah. there's three undoubted tests. and uh, For both teams. Let's, let's both see how Tottenham... Uh, yeah, both teams, yeah, because they've yeah. started to just wobble a bit, haven't they? We, and we've got the Lukaku nonsense happening in the in the yeah. press. And... Um, but I'm, I, I appreciate uh, the, the Chelsea manager because I think I said this to you last time that the, about his game, he put hudson Adoy on and then took him off 20 minutes later. And quite rightly, the TV asked him, why do you put him on and then take him off? I didn't like his body language, didn't like this, didn't like that. Very matter of fact, he weren't sort of killing him with words, but just matter of fact, this is it. And I go back to the studio of three experts, non-manager manager experts, who said, oh, you can't manage like that. Oh, no, you can't manage like that. And I'm thinking, well, go on then. And it was on the basis of what are the other players thinking? And I thought to myself, I know what I'd have been thinking. That could have been me. If I was a player on that pitch on that day, that could have been me. So um, I, actually, I actually like his sort of purpose. You would know a bit more about his tactics and all that, Alan, because you see him more than I do, or you watch him more than me. Um, 
I'm very selective these days what games I watch and what I don't watch. But um, I like to see a manager in, in control of his players, not, not to stop them playing their way, their style, but in control of the basis of the team is that we all play together. And you can do that and you can do another thing and you can, you know, Pat Jennings links with Jimmy Greaves, links with Martin Chivers, which links with Dave Mackay, whatever. And it's the balance of all those things. And I like to see a manager who, who, who typifies that spirit because after all, it's a team game, but I come back to the point of your style, Alan, and players like you, it's an entertainment. And the minute they start passing the ball back and sideways and back and sideways, Get rid of that for me, kid. Sorry, mate. Very unprofessional there. So, um, no, so I, yeah, um, that's not that's not entertainment for me. No, no that's I'm, not entertainment. I'm, I'm so against. Alan, you pass the ball. You, Alan, you pass the ball. You didn't pass the ball for the sake of it. The quicker no, no. you could get that ball, I'm talking about your Stoke days. The quicker you could get that ball to green off. We all now. Have to look at our own goal. <laughs> well, that's not a bad way for your your team to be playing. Once we're all now turned round, and he's got it to feet, and you could trust him with a ball, and he'd probably feed you it back, and then you've got another runner, and the next one goes through. What's so difficult about that? No, I agree. I agree. I uh, the last time I think I went to the bridge, it wasn't the time with Tony. It was uh, I, I went to see him play Bournemouth and couple of years ago three years ago and uh we sat down at the table for lunch at half time and i said to the fellow that was in the company do you know your problem chelsea and he went well we, we, they were nil nil with bournemouth and uh i said your back four have had the ball more than your midfield players and your front players they must have had more passes across the back and backwards and forwards. And it happened with Chelsea in the early, when even when they had a good team with a John Terry yeah. thing. They, that's when it all started, yeah. you know, this possession yes. across the back. And you as a defender, you've got to love it, in you? The other team, you love it. Keep playing that. Keep doing it. You know. Keep, keep it there. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. it. Let the, back, let the back four have it. That's what it's all about. And yet they think they're good players by doing it. This, yeah. You know, but we're yeah. we're going up, we're going off the subject again. But um, it it will be in, it'll be interesting the first leg here. Absolutely. To see how um, what coach combat. Like Absolutely, Alan. I don't know if I've ever told you about my Chelsea history. So I go to a grammar school. I go completely out of the football scene. I'm playing from a school team. We don't even play competitive games. We play friendlies. So we're not going to get picked for our district or whatever we've gone. We've, we've disappeared. And a player that was older than me at my school, uh, Steve Scolding, I don't know if you know that name, became an apprentice at Chelsea. And all of a sudden, on certain days, he's outside the school gates about midday with a, what I used to call a Chelsea coat. Nice collar, navy, look, look proper. Anyway, um, I just happened to see him one day and I said, Steve, did I ever hold trials? So he said, yeah, I think there's one coming up at Easter or whatever. So, okay, um, what do I do? He said, don't bother writing in, just turn up. So I turn up at Chelsea. <laughs> you know where you walk in through the big gates and into the sort of car park and the little offices on the right. So we had to like report to an office there. And there's all these kids there and they've all written in for a trial or been asked to come for a trial. And you can imagine there's like 50 inside forwards and one left back in this group of kids. So they read out all the names and obviously mine's not there because I didn't write in. So they said, anyone we missed? What's your name? Perryman. Okay, where'd you play? Inside forward. Well, we've got too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you play left back uh, well yeah I'll try <laughs> so 
<laughs> so uh, we go on a bus and we I think did we go to Mitchum? Mitchum. Is Mitchum part of the scene Mitch, Mitch, in them yeah, days? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, no more no more happened. Of course it didn't. You you were one of many and you're not I shouldn't have even been there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Up and sort of front it. So um sorry, uh, Steve. So yeah, but eventually when how old were you, Steve, at that point? Sorry, Tony. How old were you? At About that thirteen. Point? About thirteen. And um, of course, in my under fifteen year, we got put in for the district trials. I don't know why. I think it was a new sportsmaster who didn't know the rules of the school, and I got picked for England and ended up playing for England. And then everyone wanted me, and uh, Chelsea were one of those. Uh, uh, Tommy Doherty around the house and all that stuff and. Of course, it was it was vogue at the time because Chelsea played Tottenham in the '67 final, and uh, I think I signed for Tottenham the day after they they won the the final. So uh, that was my introduction. But I weren't a Spurs man by any means. I was a West Londoner, and I actually went to Chelsea to watch games. I watched them play AC Milan one night in the uh, first Cup. There. I was there, yeah. yeah. First Cup, and. Um, uh, for instance, and uh, I went to Arsenal and saw him beat Aston Villa 5-4, one game, um, but never actually set foot in Tottenham before I got invited to be a schoolboy there. So um, so it really was, the, the what turned me around was Bill Nicholson. Bill Nicholson come to our house and he was total no nonsense, no bullshit, no spin, just said it how it was. <laughs> and I liked it. And I suppose that appealed to my type of character. And um, that's what drove me to Tottenham. And the other contender would have been West Ham. This is 67, I joined. 66 World Cup, Hurst, Moore and Peters. And therefore, Chelsea, uh, West Ham have obviously got something producing players. And um, But it was from door to door, my house to Tottenham was two hours. Bus, train, another bus, etc. And to go to join West Ham would have been two hours 20. So, you know, when you're 15 years old and you leave school and you've got four hours travel on your day, on your workload, um, especially when you're doing pre season and you're absolutely shattered and you're falling asleep on the train and you end up yeah, yeah. going past Norfolk, you end up at West Rice at the end of the line. I mean, <laughs> that's not good. But, um, but yeah, so it just happened to work out for me, of course. But but I love the Chelsea style. Um, you were part of that style, Alan. Um, you always looked a little bit sort of in front of us, edgy wise. I'm I'm not really edgy. I'm not really uh, fashionable or whatever. But I like the style. I like your kit. I liked your your way and. Um, of course, I didn't like you when I was playing against you, Chelsea, but um, I liked you a bit m more when you joined Stoke, I have to say. <laughs> well, that's the way, that's a wonderful thing about football, isn't it? You know, um, crossing swords, coming up against each other, and that's why I go back to the World Sharp, and uh, when we've yeah. been out, we don't cross paths enough, uh, that's for sure. Cause we like, will do. We will do. Well, we we still got an opportunity to. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Tony Tony can arrange that. Let him earn some of his money, Alan. Yeah, well he won't say nothing now, Steve. Well, it was my birthday last week. I'm due a pay rise, aren't I? <laughs> Love it. Love Come it. On, well, let, uh, he'll, he'll, say, he'll, he'll organize it. All I'll say about those two games. I hope that football is the winner. And um, I've got faith in my own club that they can have it off over two games. Um, I, I sometimes look back at our team. You know, we weren't consistent enough. Um, we, we didn't really ever get close to winning the league, for instance. And, um, and when people ask me about that, I say, well, we took two games... For instance, the year before that semi-final, Alan, that we've spoken about, we, we beat Aston Villa, third division Aston Villa at Wembley 
if you thought that was a disappointing final, yeah, the yeah. year after we're talking about was we beat Norwich one nil. That was a disappointing final. So I'm coming back to your point. You know, I have a two leg game and you yeah, have yeah. passion. Absolutely. Um, so I, I don't know what the authorities would have said about that. Not playing at Wembley, but anyway. So um, I think when you I think when yeah. you beat Norwich, they knocked us out in the semi final. So we'd have played you again in the final. I think. Did they? I think so. Did, was wow. that the right time? So that's right. That was, game, that was the game that was uh, abandoned Tom. because of fog at Carrow yeah. Road. Yeah. Yeah, I come back to the same thing that once you win a trophy, once you win a trophy, it's easier. You've got one foot step in to the next trophy. Do you know what I mean? Your, your team of that era, you won the Cup Winners' Cup, for instance. So you, you lived off the back of yeah. Wembley appearances, albeit disappointment if you lost against Stoke. But there's something that sort of drags you on. It's, you know, with us winning Aston Villa and then um, Norwich, for instance, the year that you knocked us out, we won the UEFA Cup against Wolves, which don't sound like a European trophy, but it was. Yeah. So, um, you know, people used to talk to me about Potticino and as much as I loved him and did love him, um, you've got to win the first trophy. And I don't care how small you think the League Cup is or that cup is or whatever. You win your first cup, you win your first trophy, you've got a chance of having, as I say, a step into the next trophy. And um, that that's really what Potticino lacked, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Good, good manager, good manager. And it's going to be interesting now with, with Conte. And I suppose these Chelsea games are going to sort of highlight because it's starting to happen now. Conte's made his decisions, apparently, on players. His, his, his decisions about who he wants to keep, who he can maybe go, and who he wants to bring in. And it's how much backing he gets. Uh, from above and this is what it comes down to and you know all I know is that the Spurs supporters are absolutely in love with Conte and I don't know what you think about him and you've you've seen his decisions over the years with Chelsea and stuff um, the Spurs supporters are in love with him and if Levy don't deliver what he wants I think Conte's the type that's going to walk out he will walk out yeah so yeah. let's see, let's yeah. see. But. I, was a bit, I was a little bit uh, concerned about his comment. I, I don't like to uh, single people out, but his comment about Eric Dyer be, can be the best centre half in the world. I was a bit concerned about that. Um, I give it a few. Not a chance. Yeah, no. no Alan, not, 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 not a no, chance. No, I know. I agree. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought if that's. And you shouldn't be saying that. Um, you know, it's like the, it's like the thing. I thought that was very. I thought that was very unconte-ish. Yes. Yeah. I thought he. I think he leads. I haven't. Oh, well, I did in Japan, but um, uh, I wondered what was the motivation behind that. Well, there's, there's two, there, you know, Steve, but, um, there's, two way, there's two ways to do that. There's, um, uh, Frank Lampard always says that uh, Jose Marino said to him in the showers one day, keep going. He says, you can be the best midfield player in the world. You keep scoring. Mean, people couldn't, midfield players could, couldn't score goals like Frank. He's incredible, sure. you know. Uh, that's the reason. Absolutely. The but... Had he said that in the press, in the media, that would have been a, a no no. Um, it been, do you remember uh, when? Do you remember, Alan, when Sir Alf Ramsey said Martin Peters is 10 years ahead? I remember it well, yeah. I.e., you don't know what you're looking at. If you, Martin Peters, you don't know, you don't know football. That's basically what he was saying. Yeah, 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 and I think that sort of uh, was a heavy weight to bear on Martin's shoulders. The fact well, that he, he made that public comment. Exactly, I remember it very well. It's um, uh, and, and it's very similar to the 
the thing he said about Frank because if he just said it in public, I think Frank would have put it would have put him off his game and it would embarrass him a little bit. You know, um, I don't think yes. you should say that about but, players because he wasn't Martin. Wasn't he was a great player, Martin? But he wasn't. I used to love playing against Martin. It was I looked forward to playing. Yeah, so I, yeah. I didn't look forward to playing against Alan Ball. Let's put it that way. Go would get him away from me. You know, yeah. what a player. You know. He was he was ten years, old, you know. He was, you know. When we played in the, against uh, the West uh, West Germans in seventy five, he got, Don Revy gave him the captaincy because he thought he was finished. Well, he showed him that he wasn't finished, and it, all it Dad did with Alan was the same what he done to me. He was, didn't think I was good enough, so he picked me, and then he picked Alan as captain. He thought them two can't do it, and we proved him wrong. So that he. He got us to that point yeah. where we said to each other, they, "Absolutely." Alan Ball had already won the World Cup. Don Revy hadn't even won the European Cup. Sure, Ball had sure. done it. Ball, sure, sure. Ball, Ball was superb in '66, and and just as even better in '70. With Bobby Moore was better in '70 in Mexico. That was his best World Cup. Mm. I yeah. think we were better in '70. We were in '66, but there, you know, that's uh, what the way '70. 70s team was great, great yeah. team. You know, we were so unlucky. Should, should have won it. Yeah, yeah. Should have won it. Too bad. Alan maybe. Ball with the uh, Alan Ball uh, in the players' room after a Tottenham Arsenal game um, tapped me on the shoulder, said, "You don't like me, do you?" <laughs> I said, "Not really, Alan." <laughs> he said, "You would if you played with me." <laughs> come, come, Typical. Yeah. Comes back to the. To the point, you yeah. cross swords, you yeah, cross yeah. swords, and uh, you know all this shaking hands in the tunnel and all that. Not, not up for that. That's a different era to what we come through. No, no. But um, yeah, me, me and Ozzy in Japan. One of the first things we did. So every team had Brazilian players. I think you were allowed three foreigners, but most of them had Brazilians because they they looked at Brazil as the, the top top country, and. Maybe they want some wrong. Anyway, we had three unknown Brazilians. Others had more well-known. And uh, But all the Brazilian players would congregate before a game and all be talking and laughing. And, you know, we're all having it off together here. We're all getting paid, paid ex excess money and all that. And Ozzy said, no more of that. No, after the game, you you have a party, you do whatever you want. But before the game, separate which i i believe in as well you can all be similar to each other it, it's on, interesting mate. you say that Steve. i want to wrap it up by just asking you what i mean today the rivalry between i'm not sure if in london there's a bigger rival maybe arsenal and spurs uh but the chelsea spurs rivalry has reached such an extent now that i think both teams look at look at the other team as if you know they're the, they're the one team that we want to finish above what was the rivalry like between the two between the two sets of players back in your day, for instance, for, in advance of that 71-72 League Cup semi-final? The, the passion, whatever you want to call it, of Chelsea and Leeds, that looked to be completely over the top as such. But that's the way you had to be against Leeds. You had to match their their nastiness, if you if you, for want of a better word. Um, I, I don't remember at the end of that game being any extra disappointment. You couldn't be any more disappointed if you lost to someone else. You could not have. You're disappointed in yourself that we lost to a to a a home defeat. To near rivals, and um, I, I think that says volumes about what you think about your own club. Don't worry about other clubs; they are what they are, and they do it their way. And no one's to say it's right or wrong. We do it our way, and we got done on that night, and we got done over two legs. And the point I was trying to make was that, you know, we obviously were better than Man City in '81, and took two games to beat, and we were better than. QPR in 82, but took two games to beat them. And normally over two games, we was on it. We was on it. We were, we had some great years in Europe. Um, again, over two legs. 
and none of this, you go out of this competition, then you go back into a lower competition and then you go to a lower, no. Um, so you thought enough about your club that the disappointment was all about what, what you hadn't helped your club achieve and not about how much the other team can rub it in on us. I don't remember being rubbed in on us, the fact that we lost that game, personally. It would be these days, it would be these days, that's for sure. Enough. Alan? No, Good it's, man. Um, um, you also I used to respect your opponent. You also used to respect your opponent. And, you know, Arsenal won the double at Tottenham that night when Ray Kennedy, God bless him, scored that, you know, a header from the, from the edge of the box. Um, you, you, you're, you're desperately disappointed that you've let down the double team of the early 60s that we allowed on that night Arsenal to have done the first leg of their double. But it's actually not against Arsenal. It's against about your own team. How you'd let your own supporters not let them down because we tried our legs off. But, but in a way, we, we'd sort of soured the the double bit. And you know, you're, the double you're I think what I think what a lot of people don't understand as well, and I do it. I do it a lot. I think about it a lot. Is um, going back to the Stoke and Leeds game three two. The the Chelsea Leeds game when we we won at Old Trafford. I didn't play for injury. Uh, had they gone against us, the people in Leeds, Leeds would still be talking about that, but they never mention it. Yeah. If they had they won that game. Yeah. And had Leeds beaten us at Stoke, we would have been known as a team that, you know, they broke Absolutely. the record against, you know. And you you don't want to be a part Absolutely. of that, do you? You don't want to be a part of that team. No, no, no. You know, no. we would have went out. We would have went, knowing that Leeds broke the record against us and you've got to go out and go in the pubs and go in the restaurants and people go, whoa, no, not tonight, yeah. go out. You know? That's where the competitiveness comes from. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's where it comes yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. And it's not a nastiness. It's not a nastiness to each other. I think sometimes there is nastiness between supporters to other supporters, but but actually it shouldn't be. You know, support your club. Support your club. Don't unsupport somebody else. Just concentrate on your club. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's that's a great message to send to the fans ahead of Wednesday's game. And as you said, Steve, we're gonna, we're yeah. gonna. I think we're gonna learn a lot about both teams in the next few weeks because they're playing against each other so I'm much. I'm sure it'll tell us a lot about. I'm where sure both we teams are. Really and and Conte has said that he's made his decisions about players, but I'll tell you what, there's some more decisions to be made off the back of the competitiveness these two games are going to be. Three games, three games are going to be. We're both made. So we're both made. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Great to talk to you, chaps. And you, mate. We will get together. We will. Yeah, please. Must we do. We leave Tony, it to thank him. you very we much. We're team leaving to him. Love yeah. it. Birthday, Thanks, boy. Thanks for the chat. Let's hope it's a good game on Wednesday. See you soon. Good luck to you. Bye-bye. Happy New Year, Chris. See you.